Greetings friends, it's a Langsaur with another Hydro Sorcerer. It's actually, I recently made a Hydro Sorcerer already, right? But um, I made it much better. You can tell this is now even stronger. Killing a Daryl, no problem. Tormented, obviously, like the Uber on Daryl. Who cares about the regular ones? And it is because we actually now went more into burning damage. Other than just crit damage. That helps us a lot. We do still mostly crit because all the items are still focused on crit damage. Because um, we do more crit damage to burning enemies. So we got a bunch of nice additions. We also mostly masterworked. Not really. Um, but a lot actually masterwork. So this build is pretty expensive though. But it can do the pit 100. I tried it just fine. Oh, whatever, let's pick it all up. So um, I'm gonna show you later how to play it perfectly, but now let's first look over what we actually have, what the build is about. So we do have shark hose, obviously this is all in, in the fives, but um, nothing changed here, really. Um, frozen orb is still the same. But okay, if you don't know, let, let's start from the beginning. We go into the fireball, obviously, to get two points to go here. We have the frozen orb, one point into it. We are at five because of our item. And then we go into the Greater Frozen Orb because um, chance to throw a uh, vulnerable and make them frozen. The frozen is a key thing because we need a lot of crowd control with this build. We have a potent warding which we also get from our items. And we have one in Flame Shield which also heals us. One in Teleport which gives us damage reduction. And in the Ice Armor which also gives us a cooldown reduction and I believe Mana Regen, yes. So we have all the defense ones we kind of need. Glass cannon always, you always go for this and one into this. Then we have the Hydras in five points into Hydras. And I went with the Summon Hydra, which means Hydra also burns enemies for an additional 100% of its base damage dealt over six seconds. All right, we want this. The key thing for this is, we go to this later, Lucky Hit is, and that helps us to immobilize even more crowd control because the Hydras can immobilize. Uh, mana Shield, classic, just gives us mana. And damage reduction and using a cooldown grants you barrier that means whenever we cast our lightning spear we also gain another barrier conjuration mastery obviously we need this because it's all conjuration and it's on eight because of our skills uh, items lightning spear one point into this again four from the shako and uh, into the stun more core control again one into ice blades and then into this because with this, basically what it says, 20% of enhanced ice blades cooldown reduction is applied to your other skills. And what it does here, uh, when you make someone vulnerable, it is it reduces the cooldown. And what this does is, that makes lightning spear pretty much available all the time. So you've thrown your hydras into the ground, and then you just keep casting your lightning spear all the time to summon them while casting the barriers. But that's very powerful. Down here, this is a key thing. We want to have this, the Warring Blaze. 40% increased crit damage against burning enemies. That's actually a lot. And if they're crowd controlled, it's actually 20%. We could go even higher, but I kind of don't want to give up anything else. I already gave up Icy Veil, which is painful. Because 25% increased battle duration would be nice. But we can't. Um, I've, we could think of this. 5% increased damage to elites. But it is kind of nice because we also do frost damage. But I'm still actually gonna throw it out here and do. The build out here, uh, down here, will have everything perfectly set up on max roll. Then we have killing a burning enemy increasing mana region because we kill a lot of burning enemies. That's a lot of. We never run out of mana, really. Burning damage to. Um, yeah, increased burning. Uh, burning damage. Increased burning damage to burning enemies. <laughs> Endless pile. And you heal for each burning enemy. And of course, we then go into the combustion. Burning effects is 6% increased damage, additional 4% per unique source of burning. So this is all into burning. And the key thing though is this one that makes all our damage. 21% increased crit damage against the burning enemies. So how this works is that... Um, should I go with the... No, no. Let's actually go with the Paragon first. 
And I'm going to show you later how it all works so it makes sense. With the Paragon, the first one we have, want to have Invocation. Simple. Conjuration, crit damage. Um, and it deal 1% or like 15% less damage to us by the Conjuration skills. So basically the Hydras make us tank here, but also do more damage. Then this one was uh, the Elemental Summoner. Conjuration skills have 10% reduced cooldown or mana cost and do damage, obviously. Here we use Conjurer. Again, more Conjuration damage, damage and longer duration, very important. Um, we also pick up this one. Attack speed and Conjuration damage whenever we can. We go up over here, this is a funny one. And we only, we don't even pick up a Glyph on this one. This is the uh, Burning Instinct. Your Burning damage is increased by 10%. Of your crit damage bonus for every 20 intelligence you have up to 80. Basically, just more burning damage. And this, you saw this with Andario just a second ago when the burning was just constantly pulling down the, the health bar. Then we go up here though, we keep uh, moving here towards the Searing Heat. This is also the first one we pick up. And you see, this is a bit funny. Um, we actually go into this ball from two sides. This way, we, we save a lot of points. So you go up here. Straight into the Searing Heat. Uh, what it does, more crit chance and deal increased direct damage equal to the fire bonus. And more fire damage, fire damage over time, which is burning, right? Then we go over here. This is Frigid Fate, I believe, yes. Bonus damage to vulnerable and bonus damage with cold up to a maximum of 60. Which you haven't even maxed out, but still, it's great, great damage. And here we throw in the control. 65% damage to crowd control enemies because we have them crowd controlled a lot. We have them stunned, frozen, immobilized, uh, chilled, all the things. Vulnerable. So we have a lot of CC going. And we did more damage to that. Very simple. And over here, this was the fridge effect. Uh, we already talked about this. Then we go up here into the ice fall, which we also don't need just for the glyph. But in the glyph, we throw in the torch. Fire damage over time again, increased damage per nearby burning enemy, also great, so 12% more damage for anyone's burning, and they are burning all the time. Simple. We go over into, which one is this again? Yeah, Enchantment Master. We don't need this one because it kind of sucks. But we want to have another glyph in, Destruction. Crit damage, 105%, insane. Uh, increase all damage enemy takes from you by 12%, also insane. And then we go back down in the one we already had, the Searing Heat. But we only throw in the Glyph, which is the Flame Feeder. 42% damage to burning enemies and increased direct damage to burning enemies. This Paragon Ball setup was actually um, done by Twitch chat, specifically a friend in Discord. He's called Badger. So shout out to him. Um, he did this mostly, most of the Paragon. I just took it mostly and then I changed it up a little bit, but it's mostly from him. So now, how does this all work? Let's look at the items. Very simple. Look, the key thing we have is, of course, the Fractured Winter Glass. Again, because what it does in the power thingy, casting Frozen Orb has a 65% chance to spawn a random conjuration when it explodes. So you get all your Lightning Spears, you get the Ice Blades, and sometimes cast Hydras. Here's something to note, though. When it casts the Hydra with Frozen Orbs, they don't have the extra heads we gain from our items so it just spawns them with four which is pretty bad um this i think this is a bug i don't think it should happen like this personally um but we can't recommend this we just have to cast our hydras ourselves all the time but that's what it is key thing down there is though your conjurations have a 90 percent chance to launch a frozen orb at nearby enemies what does this mean we plant our hydras on the ground, they do burn, burning damage and a lot of crit damage, even more to burning enemies. And then they also shoot the frozen orbs at enemies, which can then also cast more conjuration. So this is an infinite loop of shit that's happening. <laughs> and plus they do vulnerable damage and they do freeze them and chill them. So that really buffs the hydras up a lot. A fresh of winter glass, if you get one with a max roll like I have, 90% chance to launch a frozen orb, that's what you want. Now my master working didn't quite hit here. I wanted it to be on the double chance for the frozen orb projectiles. Um, that would have been better, but whatever. Next one we need, absolutely need, is the Tarashas. 
uh, classic because uh, for each type of elemental damage you deal gain 50% increased damage for 4 seconds up to 80 if you have a better roll than I do. Dealing elemental damage refreshes all bonuses. Because we switch all the elemental damages all the time this is a lot of damage especially also with the non-physical damage. Lucky hit gives us again immobilized because the Hydra is immobilized with lucky hit. And potent warding is also um, survivability. Then, I mean, Shaco, like the Hurricane Crest, is kind of a staple in the Sorcerer anyway, because Sorcerer is squishy and this helps us a lot. Maximum life, resource, armor, cooldown reduction is great always, and of course, 20% damage reduction, plus 4 ranks to all skills. So you kind of have to have this one. I hate doing this, I don't like um, having to use mythics in builds but it, with the sorcerer you, you kind of have this one maybe you also got a better one than i rolled but whatever then the isus heal loom is very powerful here as well um, we use this because of the crit damage as you can tell it has a lot of critical strike damage implicit also movement speed and movement speed for enemies because this helps us a lot to um, also map faster and your crit chance is increased by 40 percent of your movement speed bonus All right so you want to have more movement speed as well now for the legendaries, we're going to want to go with Assault here because of the implicit crit strike damage, you see 70%. Then the key thing you have to have on both weapons, this one and the offhand, is the Hydra heads. See, this is tempering, right? Casted Hydras have plus 5 heads. Sadly, I only rolled 4 on this one. So you can have even more because each Hydra head does more crit damage, does more burning, does more frozen orbs. So that really multiplies the more heads. It has. Very powerful. Then of course, uh, Master working worked very well on this one. Hydro damage and crit strike. Nice. Um, you put in the... Um, what's it called? The What's the green gem called? Amethyst? I don't even know. Emerald? Not sure. But you want to have more crit damage. Very simple. Um, this was a bad implicit with the life on hit. It's not bad, but it helps to stay alive. But it's not necessary. Um, it's fine. Still, I have the Hydro damage and I have to have 5 heads. That's what we wanted. Then on the ring, Hydro damage again, resource generation, crit damage. And so you want to go with crit damage a lot because again, against burning, there's sadly no ethics for burning damage. And it doesn't really help us anyway. The crit damage is what really helps us scale late game. So you want to have crit damage and Hydro damage on all these tempered or implicit start and max that's what you want same thing here or crit chance in this case if you can or lucky hit this one is a great uh, master work also lucky 27 percent chance to freeze for two seconds so this is even more crowd control try to get as much crowd control as you can stun or freeze i also have stun on this one i believe uh, oh yeah i forgot about the t-bots well never mind um yeah 20 percent chance to stun for two seconds and ice armor duration this was also a great roll by the way if you can have something like this, perfect. I forgot to mention this unique uh, t bolts will. You don't need this, okay? But it's a great, nice addition because you can tell it's a lot of uniques. It's a very expensive build. But what this does is, you have 15 up to 20% increased damage while unstoppable and for five seconds after. When you become unstoppable, you gain 50% of your primary resource. The great thing is that 20% more damage while unstoppable. We gain this from our flame shield, all right? The flame shield makes us unstoppable, it makes us immune, which is a unstoppable um, buff. So, you can also run another aspect, there is this vampiric aspect on one of your um, things that um, turns you into bats when you evade, and that makes you unstoppable. So that would also give you more damage. You can also go with this. I didn't, but um, it works. Also gives you all stats, maximum life, maximum resource, damage reduction while unstoppable. It's great. Makes you tankier and gives you more damage. Not necessary. If you have good pants that just have good implicits and good tempering, that also works. Um, yeah, that was pretty much it. Eyes are more lucky hit. Yeah, that's it. Okay, now for the aspects. Of course, you want to have casting conjuration skill grants you damage reduction. That's insane because we have a lot of conjuration skills. You may have one additional Hydra. You need that for sure. Obviously, you want to have three of those. Um... Frozen Orb explodes addition, two additional times as destination. You need this for sure, very important. Um, 
because it's just way more damage, more vulnerability, etc. You know how it is. Increase damage when you have a barrier active. You have barrier active pretty much all the time, so you kind of need this. And uh, critical hits with lightning spear cause lightning to arc from it, dealing uh, damage to its target up to 500 enemies. Damage is increased by a crit bonus, so this makes your lightning spear much more, uh, much stronger because you do a lot of crit damage with it. Now, this build also works well if you run another mythic in here, which is the Ring of Starless Skies. Um, but then you lose this one, right? This aspect. But the mythic is kind of worth it. I'm not using it because I don't have it. I tried farming it, impossible for me. That's what it is. But if you have it, you can run the Ring of Starless Skies over, over this ring here. You lose um, another Hydro Damage source. But it's really strong, so I, I, I kind of like this, but it also works with the other ring, okay? Just just to mention it, it also works with the Ring of Starless Guys. If you have it, throw it in, it's stronger than this one, for sure. Again, tempering go with Hydro Damage, or Crit Damage, or Crit Chance, or in this case for the um, armor and the gloves. You want to have, I would say, two items that give you crowd control, in this case Freeze and Stun because that helps you really a lot. The other studio you want to use here is of course the uh, precision one because that gives you crit chance and crit damage a lot more, 35% crit damage, so that is even more damage on, on your guy. Now how to play this build? This is a pit level 100 as you can tell up here, right? Um, the key thing is you have to understand with the Hydras, one of the drawbacks is you always have to go to the next mob and set up the whole thing, basically. You have to go there and cast all the Hydras yourself, three of them. There's a lot if, because you have a lot of heads. And you have to do this every time. So what you do is you run there and then you cast your barrier, usually the ice armor first. And then you see, keep spamming your ice spear, as you can tell, it always goes down a lot in cooldown. And again, you, and then you also want to hit left click to shoot your frozen orbs at them. So. What you notice though is that when you go through this, you run there and then you recast your Hydras again, you cast your Lightning Spear, you cast your Barrier, and then you cast some more Hydras. That's how you pretty much play this. If you want more damage, you activate your Flame Shield, because that gives you more damage because you're unstoppable, 25%-ish. And you also still have to kite a little bit, right? You don't want to stand in the damage too much. Let your Hydras do the work and your Lightning Spears. But you will also notice, once you start a pit, for example, or a boss fight or whatever, you will have to s sort of ramp up your damage first by spamming a lot of lightning spears. So a lot of them are flying around. Stop hitting me. You can also tell that a lot of the enemies are usually frozen due to our insane crowd control. What you will notice though with bosses is that sometimes the Frozen Orb, obviously, when it explodes and creates a Conjuration, it can cast a Hydra, but then, as I said, it will create this four-headed Hydra and not... It doesn't get our item bonuses for some reason. I think that's a bug, but whatever. So you're better off just running in, just cast your Hydras yourself. And that's, that's fine. That's, that's mu much better to play that. But what you're basically doing is you run in, you cast your Hydras, then you go straight into your barrier. You cast your Lightning Spear as much as you can. You cast more Hydras, Lightning Spear and your Frozen Orb. So the left mouse button in my case and the right mouse button, like these two, the Frozen Orb and the Lightning Spear, is what I spam most of the time. And then every few seconds I cast another Hydra to make sure I always have all three. Just to make sure. Um, I'll be honest, the pit level 100 is sort of the max the build can do at this stage. Not fully masterwork, as you can tell. Most master, uh, most items are at like 8 of 12 masterworking. So it's not fully maxed. If you max it out and if you have the Starless Skies, you can probably go higher or at least the 100 is easier to do. One problem you run into is, for example, if you fight the Stormcaller boss in the pit. This guy can shred your ass very fast. It's not the damage is not really the problem, it's that you die too fast to it. Because we gave up some tankiness for some more damage. 
So be aware of that. Regardless, I think as you can tell, we're doing just fine running through a level 100 pit with the Hydras, which I think is a good thing to finally see some Hydras. You might want to kite a little bit, but as you can also tell, the defensive skills are also, because of Shaco, usually um, available, so you don't really ever run into problems with your defensive skills. Teleport also gives you a lot of damage reduction, I think 28% or something like that. So you also want to teleport in between and as you can tell the problem with this is that you always have to sort of set up and ramp up your damage wherever you go with new mobs because you have to cast all the hydras again next it's just a few seconds but still you have to do it so let's see how we do against the boss out here we cast everything and then we keep casting our Lightning Spear, and as you can tell, what you want to do is, you kind of want to see once you stagger them, which happens a lot, now there it is. And you just spam left click and the Lightning Spear, as much as you can, to get more Lightning Spears out, that's what you want. You saw I had these four-headed Hydras, like down here, happening, so I just recast them all. So it's a much more active build, you have to think a lot more. To sort of compensate for the bug, they cast the four-headed Hydras. So you're just fine recasting them every few seconds, right? That's not a big deal. You can do this just fine. No, I got staggered, that was rude. Now he's staggered again, and we keep hitting the frozen orb and the lightning spear. Turn on your flame shield, don't forget to turn it on, because it is 30% more damage. Overall, you wanna have this. And then just keep spamming it. I see a hundred level hundred pit boss doing just fine. You see a lot of burning damage happening there. Again, this one is easy to deal with. The spirit caller is sort of your arch nemesis with this build. Okay, and the reason is you don't really see his damage very well. He has a bunch of rockets, and because there's so much clutter happening with all these hydras, you don't see this very well, and that is a big big problem. As you can tell, that works just fine. So I think the build is very good, very strong, and I like that we actually have a Hydra build which we can do higher tier content with. You can do all bosses just fine, I even killed Lilith with him, with that build, no problem. I like Uber Lilith, so um, no issue gentlemen, no issue. Great build, does everything you want to have, and I think it's a lot of fun, it's, and it is different for once, because we have the Hydras finally killing shit. Anyway. Let me know in the comments what you think of it, if you have things you would change or any ideas, and I will see you guys in the next video.